coming to celebrate our 50th anniversary. It's a, a productive, sorry, I'm not a rest. <laughs> As the late Christopher Dean, if you haven't heard about it, and I'm sure you have, if you've read the paper and listened to the radio, this is the same production that was done 50 years ago to open Slater's first season. It was directed by Francis Marion Brown, and we thought it was only right that she should do it again 50 years later. And for that, we would like to thank you. There will be two 10 minute intermissions, which we will probably stretch to 15, for all the people here to marvel to have you all. And uh, during those intermissions, there will be free soda for you, which the players wish you to have. Uh, there's another special occasion for the last couple of months. Our president has been down in the sunny south. Now she's come back to the cold north again. And I would like to present to you today. I'd like to add my personal welcome to the remarks and knowing me to all of you, uh, people who, a lot of familiar faces who are always very loyal uh, to all of our productions. And the rest of this year, we have several we hope good surprises for you, and we hope you continue to join us in our festivities, and we hope you gain some new people in the audience as well as on stage. We also have new people, by the way, in this production tonight that we're happy to have. Uh, on a personal note, I'd like to say this. They say a good president is one who can delegate authority and then leave them to do the job. And even though there are some people in a higher up job than mine who have gotten into trouble doing this, um, in my case, it's just the opposite. Now, several people have been involved with doing all these with the production, and when you're in that, because you have a job all day and then you come and work, you don't have much time to do other things. And that leaves like a few people to do all the things that have to be done for a 50th anniversary celebration. But there's one person who has done a lion's share, and I didn't have to worry about all the way about all the things we talked about that needed to be done, and as the captain on the ship said, I had hope to go with you. That's how terrible to say it for being a employer. But they did a tremendous job, and one of them, I personally want to call attention to the fact I want it known that Nona Serrano painted this entire auditorium by herself and did the sleep and everything, and I don't know. for hours and hours of work with the display upstairs. So if you haven't seen all of it, I urge you to go up and see it during the intermission. We'd like you to be sure and find the guest register out there. Uh, I'd like to be able to look to it because I may not make another 50 years. Uh, for all that hard work while I was away, that looks like the end of it. On behalf of the players, enjoy the show. Oh, Abby's terrible upset. What about? 
Why, Pa, about leaving us. Oh, that's right. Today is Thursday, and I clean forgot. Been enough talk about it. So Abby's leaving us after all these years. That strong coffee, hot and ready for you, Dr. Haggett. Think you going all this time on empty stomach. Everything come out all right? Yes, boy, eight pounds, three ounces come out. Well, ain't that just lovely? Expect the Jordans, real pleased as a boy. Expect most folks sooner have boys and girls, and I don't know as to blame them. Now you sit there, Dr. Haggett, Susie, you fix your pot's coffee whilst I get the rest of his breakfast. There's his Boston paper handy for him and a telegram with it. Just come. She appears to be making quite an effort for her last day. Well, Abby Wood, it's going to seem like losing one of the family. That's odd. Pa, what is it? it it's from New York. No. Yes, it is. An, an admirer of the late Christopher Bean will do himself the honor of calling on you at noon on Thursday. Signed, Maxwell Davenport. Chris Bean? I haven't thought of Chris Bean for years. Chris Bean, who painted all them pictures? Guess he thought they was pictures when he wasn't too drunk to think. <laughs> but who's Maxwell Davenport? Guess I ain't supposed to know, but I... Chris, now, why ain't that painter paper hanger fella been around like he said he wouldn't have fetched this stuff right away? He was all finished up when he went home last night. He gave me his word he'd be here first thing this morning. Deliver me from any more painters in this house. Your sister Aid is upstairs in a bed this minute with a sick headache this paint smell's given her. And when I think of the work's got to be done today, all your pa's things to move back into his office and all, that is just too much to even. Here you are, Dr. Haggett. And I'll be leaving us. Soon you wouldn't speak about me leaving. You got no objection, Miss Haggett. Well, you are leaving, ain't you? Well, yes, I am, but you know I don't want to, and I wouldn't neither, only it's the will of God. The only way I can get through is if nobody speaks to me about it. You keep reminding me, I... <coughs> what I want is to hear about Miss Jordan's baby. Didn't get married none too soon, did she? <laughs> Just think when a baby comes that quick after a wedding, pretty near have to brush her rights off in it. <laughs> she in labor long? Not so long. She had just a terrible time? Why, you look all in yourself, Dr. Haggett. Why, couldn't have been more than four o'clock and they called you out. These babies are getting you up or keeping you up, don't it? If you feel so bad about leaving us, Abby, why don't you stay? Oh, you're all so good to me. Don't want to go. It's the will of God. First time I ever heard of the will of God, sending a woman off to live in Chicago. Well, couldn't have been nothing left, make my poor brother's wife take sick and die and leave him with four small children, no woman in the house. No one be my way, will thing like that. But don't let's be going over it. You're leaving us. We're sorry to have you go. We'll save our tears till the time comes for you to take your train. What time is it? Five o'clock to Boston. We're going to miss you, Abby. And me? What about me? Leaving this place where I've been so long? For 15 years been here? But don't keep on going over it. No, don't want to keep going over it either. Can't stand this about it. Poor Abby. We'll never get another one like her. Well, that wouldn't be such a bad idea. <laughs> you want us to do without no help, I suppose. I don't see why not. Three women in the house. Oh. I'll undertake to make my bed mornings. But, Pa, have you thought what folks would say? What would they say? That Dr. Haggett's practice has fallen off so bad he can't afford to keep help. You keep house, Hannah, and I'll keep my practice. You'd sit right back and let everything go to the dogs if it wasn't for me. How long was I after you to get that entry in office painted and papered? Yes, I know. Who was it that you and me found out we could sell that old paper for more than enough to give you a nice, clean office sick folks could enjoy? I know, I know. And now you want to spoil the whole impression by having your wife and daughters do their own work? I know, Hannah, I know. But if you can find some way to make my patients pay the bills they owe me. Well, if folks don't pay you, don't. Freedom. What would happen to my practice then? Merciful, Jonah, there ain't no reasoning with him. Well, doctors have to care for the sick even if they can't pay. It's the ones who can and don't these Ada, days. Ada, dear, you'd better go upstairs. I can see I got to talk private with your pa. If you could find new help for the same as we pay out. Oh, new and I got won't cost as much more. You haven't gone and got a new one already. Yes, I did. Last week when I went to Boston. Have you got help in Boston? Can't you see, Milton, that it's in, in bad times like these that you've got to keep up appearances most of all? I ain't sorry to see Abby leaving. She's been here long enough. Maybe fine for her to feel she's one of the family. Call the girls by their first names and all, but 
You know, Milton, she ain't got her money to dash or style about her. Now, that new maid's not like that. Nope, she's a real city maid that'll answer our doorbell proper. How much more does she cost? Well, when you think of all the girls that I are saving making every stitch of our clothes for Florida, oh, what? Oh, but you're still talking Florida this winter. Why wouldn't I be? Well, the girls and you ain't going to Florida or any other place till times get better. <laughs> Yes, you did, Ada, and it ain't the first time, neither. Maybe I do sit by and let your ma paint and paper up the office. Maybe your ma's gonna have a maid from Boston, maybe. But as long as I can't collect the bills my patients owe me, there ain't no more use of no Florida talk. I take my stand on that. Well, I take my stand on it, too, Milton Haggett. And I wouldn't be no kind of mother if I give it up. What's Florida got to do with being a mother? Maybe you don't care whether or not your daughters get married, but I do. And so do they. You don't have to go to Florida to get married. Well, maybe not. But the opportunities down there are exceptional. Oh, stop the nonsense. It is nonsense, Milton. Well, everybody knows those my MI beaches are just crawling with boys. Not a thought in their heads but romance and getting married. <laughs> Most boys get them ideas, most any place. Not in New England in the wintertime. Well, the girls can wait to spring, then. How much for me to grow up an old maid? I don't want no such thing. I'm practically an old maid already. You're not more than a baby. I'm 24. No, you're not. You're 26. Oh. <laughs> Well, if you're in such a hurry to get married, go down to the post office and put up a notice. Ah! Hey, now, Milton, after all the advantages we give our girls, would you, would you want to see them married to village boys? Uh, what's wrong with village boys? You married one. Oh, I haven't been to my am I then? <laughs> thank you, Hannah. I, I thank you. But if Ada can do half as well as you've done. There ain't no voice to speak of in this place. What there are don't like me. What is it makes Florida boys like you better? Is it because the senior in your swimming suit? <laughs> All right, give the boys here a chance and invite them in, put on your swimming suit, and sat by the fire. <laughs> well, your pa's got the best of us again. No hope of getting to Florida this year. I'll have to see if I can make them take back my flowered foulard. <laughs> well, that's too bad, but I don't see as it matters. It does matter, it does. Pa says I'm only a baby, but what he really wants is for me to grow up an old maid. Uh, I don't want no such thing. All I want is... Stay here. You'll need to get married before me. Because all the boys like you'll be better than they like me. And if nothing gets married before me, I'll, I'll just die. I know it. I'll just die. <laughs> if this forever having just enough and never a mite over for the... Greed, Hannah, greed. Well, maybe I am greedy. But it's only fools and wastrels don't try to get all the cat out of life. <laughs> no man has never called me greedy for money, Hannah. And I hope no man ever does. I'll go upstairs now and shave. I declare if folks ain't peculiar, though. Their eyes crying and carrying on and over going away. You folks doing the very same as me because you got to stay. Oh, thank you, Abby, not to make observations and remarks. Oh, don't mind me, Ms. Haggett. I'm only help without a mite of style about me. Call the girls by the first name, just like one of the family. Now you've got a real city maid coming from Boston, and she knows how to answer the doorbell. Parappa. You are a, a common and impudent girl, and I discharge you for listening to keyholes. Can't discharge me. Discharge yourself already. Going them good and ready. I'll take no back talk from you, young lady. You'll go now. Go this afternoon. Morning, Mrs. Haggard. Oh, it's the painter. Morning, Ada. Morning, Susie. I was just saying to the girls it was about time you showed up. Warren ain't so late. Need fret about it. Weather's getting sharp. Guess winter must be coming. Had trouble starting the old truck this morning. Well, clear that stuff on out here. I'm sick of the smell of paint. Plenty of things in this house smell worse than paint does. <laughs> <laughs> I come to get my stuff out, Mrs. Haggis. And I brought each of you a little present, too. Did you, Warren? Why? Well, I brought each of you girls one of my pictures. Oh, picture you, Warren? No, not of me. They're pictures I painted. Oh. Let's see now, what is it? Wait, it's a dead fish. It looks like Sam 
salmon you caught last Sunday, Warren. That's what it is. What's yours? It... A dead duck? We'd better swap around with your sister, Susie. Your fish always makes Ada break out something <laughs> fierce, right? Oh, oh, no, not pictures, Ma. And, and it's your own work, Warren? Right? Yeah. Yeah, and the frames, too? They're first-rate paintings. I thought maybe you'd like to hang them up over the sideboard. I thought they'd look kind of suitable. Oh, no, I wouldn't have no appetite if I had to look at a dead fish and a dead duck. Oh, no, Ma. Warren's right. They'd look just lovely. To think, I never know what you were with picture painting. Well, I guess all kinds of painting comes natural to me. I can see that. To think. Why? I never knew you were so clever, Warren. I didn't know the boys around here were like you. They ain't. Why, you could paint real well if you was to study. I'm just a baby myself, but I used to take painting lessons. Do you know that, Warren? No. That flower piece there on the wall of my work took a prize that looked so natural. I guess if he was interested, I could give you some pointers. Wait, you new pointers about, Ada. It's about pictures. Did you paint these, Warren? What's these, Susie? They're what's called still life. Still life? That's painting terms. Yeah, still, still life. life yeah. What do you know about painting terms? Oh, I know. You see this, Susie? Know how he done it? He didn't use no brush. Nope. Stuck his thumb in the paint. Went like this. And like this. That's right. Oh, I know. Yeah, no. you know. Yeah. Ma, don't notice her. Tell her to go on back in the kitchen and wash Pa's dishes. Let Susie go on out and help her. And you go on up to talk to Pa. and me will hang the pictures together. <laughs> uh, I was trying to shave, but there's no hot water. Good morning, Warren. Well, Susie, Dr. we're not getting cattle for your Pa. Don't you trouble, Susie. Don't mind fetching for your Pa and you. No, but I suppose if it was me, you'd expect me to shave in cold water. <laughs> oh, say nothing, Pa. Just Ma and Abby have one of their usual uh -huh. spats. Look what Warren's paying for the dining room. Huh. They're different. If you don't like that pair, I got plenty more I painted down the shop. I guess I must have close on a hundred. A uh, hundred? You must have taken a good bit of time off your regular paint to get that many pictures painted. I don't care how much time I take off of painting pictures. I'm too good to stay with paper hanging. You ain't fixing to be an artist, I hope. You bet I am, and I'll be a good one, too. I know what I think I'm going to set right here. I'd rather have a real picture, a real painter in the family than a picture painter. Well, I was fixing to paint the dooryard fence for you, Mr. Taggart. Free? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I got a better idea now. I'll paint you a portrait of the girls instead. Oh, Warren, will you? Yeah. Does Susie have to be in it? Yep, the both of you. Warren, what's made you get so generous all of a sudden? I got to thinking over what good care you took of my ma the time she died. Now you ain't never been paid for that. Instead. Well, if you're feeling that grateful, oh, maybe you'd give us the job you just did in the office for free? I ain't that grateful. Hmm. <laughs> well, how about the portrait and the dooryard fence? If you buy the paint for the fence, I could. Well, can't you use the portrait paint? Uh, paint the same kind. Hmm. Well, then I guess the fence will have to wait till spring. But how about the portrait, Ma? Got no use for it, but I ain't got nothing against it. How will you paint us, Warren? Now that's a question. I don't know. I'd have to think. Ada, you go over and sit in that chair next to Susie. Let me see you. No, if, if Ada was listening to a seashell and Susie looking no, on. No, no. Uh, both of them looking off into the future like. You ought to paint Mrs. Haggard with them. She don't take up much room. <laughs> I'll paint them just like they are. Oh, not in this outfit. I got a lovely new one. I like that dress. I like the color. Yours and Susie's and that old chair together. I like that vibe. Just give me a scrap of paper, any old scrap, and a pencil. Here. You sit down, Susie, and I'll stand behind you. I bet your baby Warren would want you towering over me. Either now, way. would you, Warren? Either way, let's see now. Now, that's just fine, Ada. Now, Mrs. Haggard, just to give you an idea of what I can do. Don't move now. Well, won't you at least let Ada hold a bunch of flowers? Ma, that's Warren's picture. He likes me the way I am. Look, Hannah, you've <laughs> got to admit the boy's quick with his pencil. You can tell which girl is which already. <laughs> which is which? Does it look like me, Ma? Give the boy time. You don't get likenesses as quick as that. Oh, what do you know about it? Yes, I know that much. Look at that, Hannah. You're quite an artist, Warren. 
you'll be painting patriotic pictures before you're through. Ever seen the pictures at the Boston State House? They got fine patriotic pictures there. Figures life size, frames 30 feet long. Pictures that make you proud to be an American. Bunker Hill, the spirit of 76. I could give you ideas for pictures if you wanted more. The first Thanksgiving. Now that would be a good picture for a dining room. Look at that, Hannah. Where did you ever learn such tricks, Ward? Remember that painter here named Chris Bean? Chris Bean, a patient of mine. I had a telegram about him this morning. About Chris Bean? Uh, yes, a man who calls himself an admirer of his. Oh, wonder what he finds to admire him for. Chris started me out of painting when I was just a kid. He used to let me follow him and sit beside him and paint the same things he did. He gave me lessons, all I ever had. I try to remember what he taught me. And well, I hope he didn't teach you to drink the way he did. Well, if and he... You shall want a kettle, Dr. Haggard. Well, what do I want with... That's so, I was shaving. Well, I better get back to it and get around to making my calls. Thank you, Abby. Oh, Ms. Haggett, mm -hmm. almost forgot to tell you. That real city maid from Boston's out in the kitchen. Found her there when I went to fetch the kettle. Don't hardly think she'll stay after what I told her about the plane. Oh, you've got to be playing with that new man's money! Oh, I've been insulting! What? You'll have to excuse me. This is important. Mom, do you think we could invite... Will you let me see? Sure, if you want to, it's just rough. Looks to me like it isn't quite fair to Ada. As long as it's fair to you. Oh, no, Warren. Be fair to Ada or you'll get mom down on you. Oh, I take pictures of suit myself, not your mom. I don't give shucks about your mom, nor Ada either. I guess you know why I'm paying this picture. Well, you said you wanted to give mom a present. Oh, I want an excuse to see you every day. Warren, you've known me a long time to talk that way. I guess you know me long enough to know what I think about you. I guess you'd better not say any more. You say you'll marry me and I won't. Warren, what? I wouldn't be any wife for you. Not if you're going to be an artist, I wouldn't. Why not? I'm a hard worker, and I'm going to be a good artist. But I don't even know if I like art much. I'll teach you to like it. You haven't even said you loved me. Do I have to say that? <laughs> well, I think you ought to. Can't you take my word for it? <laughs> well, all right. But there's just one thing. We'd have to wait until Ada gets married first. We wouldn't have any peace if we didn't do that. Guess I'd better kiss you then. Why? Well, I'm marrying you, not Ada. And I'm awful busy and I got no time to waste. <coughs> and I guess being kissed will make you stop your nonsense. Well, maybe it will. You ain't afraid? No. All right. I'll do it then. Bye, <laughs> Warren. Here I am. <laughs> What is it? Ada messing in other people's business. Don't you dare speak to me. Ada, don't you know I'm busy? We've got that middle left arm. There's things going on in here and he's tending to. What's come over this house of mine this morning? Uh -huh. There I was in the kitchen with Ma and the new maid, and I come back in here and, and he... Don't tell him what I was doing, Ada. I'd sooner show him. <laughs> All right, I don't mind. You coming with me, Susie? Susie and me are going to get married. Oh, no! Yeah. Susie ain't going to marry no Warren Kramer. My daughter's too good to waste on some stupid deadbeat of a artist. You ain't talking about me, Mrs. Haggard. I'm the best bet for marriage in this whole country. I'm going fine. Susie's coming with me. I guess she's old enough to know her own mind. Oh, please go, Warren. This won't help things any. I won't go unless you come. Mess me if he ain't out of this house by the time I come. I'll be happy for throwing Warren out. No, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Warren. I'll get word right to you. <laughs> Better go, Warren, and let things simmer down. All yeah. right, just give me my portrait. <laughs> There'll be no more portrait painting in this house. <laughs> All right, I'll go to keep the peace with Susie's sake. But she ought to come with me because we are going to get married. <laughs> and as for you... You're what they call a Philistine, Mrs. Haggard. Yes, a Philistine. I'll go now, but I'll show you yet. I may be a, a Philistine, but I guess I nipped that little romance in the bud. 
clear out, you two, and leave Susie and me alone. I knew when I got up this morning it was going to be a terrible upsetting day for I no. Don't stay calm, Susie. <laughs> but he loved me, Pa, and I love him. It's too bad. He wasn't so hell-bent to be an artist. And what's wrong with artists? Not a thing except the cost of food and lodging. <laughs> Not if you're a good one, and he will be a good one. He's got conceit enough. The best of them's poor providers from all I hear in these days. These days? That's all you ever say, these days. If it weren't for these days, you and Ma wouldn't have nothing against war. If my lady could go to Florida. But I could get a little peace. Here we are talking, and now you ought to be out making my calls. Come upstairs now and wash your face. I'll get my coat on. I'll have a talk with Warren and see what's what. If that's the patient, Abby, show him in here in the dining room and keep the others out. I'll be right down. Will you step in here? Doctor, be right down. Thank you. I'll wait there. You can have a chair. Waiting room magazines got lost in the moving. I found the office being painted. He won't keep you long. You must be Abby. Never laid eyes on you, Ford, I recall. No, this is the first time we've ever met. Well, how do you walk right in here and call me by my name? Ever hear of mind reading? You ain't one of them, are you? Only in a small way. Here we are. You're fresh as pink. Good morning, sir. Is this Dr. Haggard? Yes, it is. I'm very pleased to meet you, Dr. Haggard. Won't you sit down? I'm sorry my office is out of commission. I don't apologize, Doctor. I've come to see you because I feel... A uh, little bilious. You look it. Can't fool me on a sluggish liver. You say you're right, but... Uh, sit down and put your tongue out. Headaches, nausea, bowels all right. You don't understand, Doctor. I'm not sick. Uh, well, if you're not sick, what do you want with me? I was just coming there, Doctor. Uh, might as well tell you I don't want no insurance. Uh, I'm not here to sell you insurance. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here solely for the pleasure of making your acquaintance. You don't tell me. Uh, indeed I do. Well, I was motoring through your lovely state, admiring the splendor of the autumn foliage. And as I came upon your village, I suddenly realized that I'd stumbled upon an opportunity to perform a duty I've too long postponed. What's that? The payment of a sacred debt I owe you, Dr. Haggis. What debt do you owe me? Uh, a matter of ten years ago, you had, as a patient of yours, a man whom I called and still call my dearest friend. Did I now? Uh, a man with a good Yankee name, an excellent Yankee name, Christopher Bean. Oh, it's you, is it? I beg your pardon? Funny, me taking you for a patient, but I wasn't expecting you for some hours yet. You're expecting me? Well, I got your telegram, Mr. Uh, uh, let's see, I, what was the name? May I see it? They soften and mix them up. Uh, that there seems clear enough. Oh, yes, I've forgotten. I said uh, noon. I, I've got here sooner than I expected. I hurried. I was afraid you might be out on your rounds visiting the sick, and I was so eager, so very eager to see you. You say here you're an admirer of Crispine. Oh, uh, that's putting it pretty mildly, Dr. Hackett. Well, I wonder if your Crispine's the same one I know. Oh, I'm certain. Well, I don't know now. As my wife said when the telegram came, can't see what he finds to admire in Crispine. Not that Chris wasn't a likable lad. I was fond of him. Oh, of course you were. Just wanted to make sure, though. Did the fellow you're thinking of think he was a painter? <laughs> you might put it that way. It's the same, then. <laughs> oh, poor chap. I always humored him about his pictures. He got to humor folks when they're sick as he was. I'm sure you did everything you could for him. Well, I hope I'd done my duty for him. Of course, a case like his, this ain't no climate for tuberculosis. If he'd had the money to get out west, he might have had a chance if he quit drinking. <laughs> as it was, there wasn't much I could do. Uh, we're all mortal, Doctor. There's no denying that. I'm glad you remember him with such affection. <laughs> we ain't none of us forgotten. Why, we was just speaking of him a few minutes past. My wife, she took a real fancy to him. He kind of appealed to her, I guess, seeing as we ain't got no sons of our own, only two daughters. And him coming to live with as sick as he was, and an orphan with no family. She took him right to her heart and gave him the old barn for his studio. He painted most everything around the place. He was terrible bad, though, them pictures of his. Maybe if he'd had some training. <laughs> oh, very like. Uh, recently, though, the other day, as a matter of fact, I was going to an old desk of mine, and I came across some letters that Chris had written while he was living there. In the last of them, it's disgraceful I put it off for all these years, he, he talked of your kindness to him and his gratitude and asked if I couldn't repay the debt he owed you. That's just like Chris. Never a penny to his name and forever borrowing. Why, he didn't even own a hat. 
Uh, let me see, the sum came to... Uh, uh, I don't remember. Uh, exactly a hundred dollars. Maybe so. Likely he asked me how much he owed me, and likely I told him if he ever had a hundred he could spare. Allow me. Oh, a little late, but paid in full. God almighty. And all my apologies for keeping you waiting. Uh, my dear sir. Uh, well, the debt paid at last. I can go back to New York a happier minute. Uh, I'll give you a receipt. Oh, doctor, please. Uh, would you allow me to shake you by the hand? I'd be honored, Dr. Hagen. Uh, just a minute. Hannah, Ada, uh, come in here. Uh, I'd like you to meet my family, Mr. Mr. Death. Oh, I'm sorry. I've left my card at the hotel. Oh, I don't need no visiting card of yours. Your name's engraved here, Mr. Davenport. Uh, my daughter Ada, my wife, my younger daughter Susie, she's not so well this morning. Uh, I called you in, though, to show you an honest man. Uh, don't be alarmed, lady. <laughs> Mr. Davenport here, who sent that telegram from New York, is a friend of our old friend, Chris Bean. Now, ten years after poor Chris's death, this loyal friend, this more than honest man, has come to pay the little debt Chris owed me. A hundred dollars. Here, you see. You take it, Ada. You take it down and put it in the bank. Such things don't happen every day. Oh, I should say they don't. And let this be an example and inspiration to both of you. It will be indeed. It will be no won't you sit right down here and rest yourself. And don't neither of you never forget the name of, uh, the name of... Uh, Davenport. <laughs> That's right, Davenport. You cover me with confusion, Doctor. I see nothing extraordinary in what I've done. You ain't tried collecting doctor's bills these days. A hundred dollars. But I've told you what my friend meant to me. I was just wondering if he didn't leave some of his pictures here to remember him by. Of course, you've told me what you thought of them, and Chris wrote how even the village boys would laugh at him while he was painting. It seems mean to say so now, but I'm afraid they did. We never let him see us laugh, though. <laughs> They'd have a special sentimental value to me. Y you can understand. There ain't nothing to be ashamed of in that. Uh, then if you have any, do you think I might take them back with me? His letters mentioned six or seven he left here. There was all of six or seven. Milton, I believe there's one in the chicken house still. In the <laughs> chicken house? That's right, Hannah, there is. But I hate to think what condition it must be in. I I'd like to have it, Dr. Haggett. No matter what condition it's in, I'd like to have it. It's a souvenir, you know. Come on, Ada, you come with me. We'll see if we can't get that for Mr. Davenport. I remember now. There, there was a leak in the chicken house top paper roof. I was looking around for something watertight and found that picture. A fine, solid, thick oil paint, you know. There was no reason to set store by it. No. Uh, wait. Abby. Abby. Uh, I just thought of something else. Run up to the attic and look in that corner behind the north door. Seems to me like we put one of them pictures of Chris Beans up there to stop the leak, too. What do you want with it, Dr. Haggett? Uh, Mr. Davenport here wants to take it along home with him. Mr. Davenport? No. Mr. Davenport was Chris Beans' closest friend. Mr. Davenport? No. See if you can get it off without tearing it and bring it down here. For Mr. Davenport? That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Haggett. I'm only sorry to cause your household so much trouble. A man like you ain't no trouble to us. I only hope we can find what you're after. Well, we got it. It's kind of dirty, but there you know chicken houses. <laughs> Just let Abby get at it with some soap and scrub, right? No, 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 that won't be necessary. Oh, it won't be no trouble. No, 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 I'd be afraid. I mean, I, I'd rather do it myself. Uh, but you can't carry it off all nasty like that. Uh, but, Doctor, don't you see what it would mean to me to bring this picture back to life? It'd be almost as if Chris himself. Oh, well, yes, I suppose. Have you ever thought of Ada's picture there? <laughs> Mr. Davenport don't want Ada's pictures. Of course he don't want no picture painted by little old me. But Ma mean, I turned one of Chris Dean's pictures over to paint my flower piece on the back. Ooh, but I didn't know that. No, ain't that a pity, Mr. Davenport? There's another we might have given you. Ada hadn't gone splotching. You painted this lovely thing, Miss Hagrid? You can call it painting, I did. This lovely living thing? Oh, Miss Deborah, I did take a few lessons. You painted this masterpiece on a few lessons? Uh, I wouldn't call it a masterpiece. 
gift, Mr. Delcourt. At least I wouldn't think it was. <laughs> My dear Miss Haggett, don't underrate your gifts. The exquisite texture of these buttercups is not to be underrated. Ma, you hear what Mr. Delcourt said? Oh, of course, I didn't mean to say you won't do better things in the future or go farther. But here already, I, the connoisseur, can see the strokes of genius. <laughs> genius? Indeed I do. What? Now, don't you go make it already into an artist. <laughs> of course I know you wouldn't want to part with it, but if you'd care to sell it... What's it worth? Oh, that's hard to say. Uh, of course her name's not known, but I'm certain some of the better picture dealers in New York wouldn't pay, say, something like $50. Oh. Uh, not that it isn't worth much more. $50? Well, let's say 40 But I could pay one like this every day. And then do, Miss Haggett, your fortune's made. It strikes me kind of funny. You come in here to pay Chris Bean's bill and then offered my daughter $40. Uh, $50. He said 40 He said 50 first and 50 is his price. Uh, of course, I will pay $50 if you care to sell it. And you can be certain that orders for more will follow. I don't know if she ought to take it, Hannah. Papa, a young girl like me could spend $50 even if we wasn't to go south. <sighs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, Miss Hager, for the pleasure of discovering a new artist. Uh, 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 she gets it off from me. I always did have a kind of weakness for art, even though I am a doctor. And you got Chris Bean's picture on the other side of mine. Uh, by Joe, so I have. And in all my enthusiasm for your work, I'd completely forgotten. Uh, uh, what did you think he was getting at that time? Oh. Isn't that supposed to be the old covered bridge up the back river? Well, maybe if you try looking at it right side up. <laughs> Looks the same to me either way. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Mr. Davenport. I shouldn't have said that about a dead man. Not with you feeling for him the way you do. Couldn't find a thing in the attic. Ain't no pictures up there in no time. Uh, but I know darn well. Maybe the mice did it. it. It was to the left of the North Dorm. Well, there ain't nothing there now except for some old tin cracker boxes Miss Haggett said. Uh, but I'm positive, I tell you. The doctor been over every inch of that attic, and I couldn't find a thing except for the trundle bed. Used to be in the front room before you bought the brass bed. And that trunk with your ma's pewter in it, and that another trunk. But, but I could have sworn. It's too bad. That's all, Abby. I'm sorry, sir. I would have liked to show you how much I appreciate what you've done, but there you are. No man can do better than his best. I'm more than satisfied with what I've gotten, Dr. Haggett, and I'm only sorry to cause you so much trouble. Miss <laughs> Haggett? Mrs. Haggett? Mr. Davenport, your call here this morning is going to stand out as one of the happiest moments in my medical career. Doctor, it occurs to me that you and I can become much better acquainted. And we might even go into business together. Business that could be highly profitable to both. But I ain't got no capital. It will require nothing more of you than, say, uh, friendly cooperation. <laughs> I got plenty of that. Then we're rich men, Dr. Haggett. Rich men. Thank you. <laughs> At this rate, we might get the floor after all. Well, after this morning, I'm not so sure you won't. I wish I knew what kind of business he's got in mind. I don't care what kind of business it is, Pa. As long as it's going to make us rich. Ada, that's no kind of talk to my daughter. If there's one thing I can't abide, it's greed for money. Yes, ma'am. Let's get on with our marketing and mouth. We'll pocket started. Yes, dear, you go right upstairs. We'll get our hats on. You know, Milton, if anything ever did happen to make us rich, well, I wouldn't much worry what it was. <laughs> Have you seen my cough, look, Abby? Oh, it's right here, Dr. Haggard. I'll go out to the Jordan's farm again first, and then the rest of them's in town. Oh, I got them all wrote down. And then you know where to reach me if I'm wanted. Oh, there I go daydreaming again. Davenport's got me all off doctor. If I was you, Dr. Haggett, I'd watch him mighty careful. Uh, well, what makes you say that? Strikes me it's always a good idea. Watch folks careful when they knows as much as he does. Uh, I do declare, Abby. I think Mrs. Haggett's pretty near right about the way you meddle. Yeah. I get a telegram from him this morning. Well, Ada, I don't know if I am going to have to take that fat flower to our junk yet. Oh, oh, I wouldn't, Ma. You heard what Pa said. You know, we just might be able to go to Florida after all. You know, at this rate, we might even be able to go to California. Just not a good one. <laughs> Oh, folks can be awful 
miserable sometimes. But well, look at poor Warren's drawing. All must up. Oh, he'll make another. Artists always do. Abby, you haven't got nothing against artists, have you? What, me? Oh, no. No siree. Not me. <laughs> I came back to see Abby. Me? I'd like to talk to you if you could spare a moment. Whatever you got to say to me. Thank you. What are you thanking me for? <clears throat> Thank you for being kind once to a friend of mine, for giving him all the things that other women denied him, all the lovely things that have no name, all the warm and tender things he so sorely needed. What do you know about me? Except for you, I was the best friend Chris B. never had. I never heard him name no damn pork. He was talked lots about his friend Bert Davis. I ain't never here to you. Uh, I'm Davis. Well, if you're Bert Davis, what are you calling yourself Davenport for? Uh, Davenport's my professional name. I needed the name that people would remember, and Maxwell Davenport... Well, if you was Bert Davis, that wouldn't be why you changed it. Uh, if you know a better reason, I'd like to hear it. Well, I do know Bert Davis got into some trouble. Chris said he owed a lot more money than he could pay, so he skipped out of the place he is living in. Anyways, that's the way Chris that was. You remember all that, do you? I ain't forgot nothing Chris ever told me. I don't look like I expected Bert Davis to look neither. Uh, you look exactly as I expected you to, Abby. Only younger and prettier. And I remembered your name. Don't forget that. Yeah, well, that's so. I used to skip my rent. I'd done it plenty often and got in lots of trouble for it. But wouldn't you expect that of a friend of Chris's? I wouldn't even put it past Chris himself. Well, guess maybe I was wrong. Be so wary, are you? Chris really mentioned my name to you? Wouldn't have expected him to mention my name. That was nice of Chris. Uh, Chris was fond of you. He say that, too? Over and over. Weren't you fond of him? He is the only man ever took me serious and talked to me. Well, he didn't talk so much. What he said is awful pithy. <laughs> Imagine you being Bert Davis. Well, I never expected to make your acquaintance. Don't you think we'd better shake on it? Well, you sat down here, Mr. Davis, and I'll sit down with you. Miss Haggett, she don't favor the help setting in the setting room. She's sitting by it that way. But she ain't here right now. What she don't know ain't gonna hurt her. <laughs> Bert Davis. My, oh, my, don't that name bring things back, though. Oh, what kind of things? Oh, listen that. Chris wrote that you were the only one who ever liked his paintings and, or got what he was after. Oh, I liked him. Had to learn to like him, but he taught me. He taught me lots. There wasn't nothing about him I didn't like. Well, if you liked his paintings so much, why did you let so many of them get lost? Why didn't you take care of better care of them? Well, I'd sooner not go into that. you got no objection. He taught you things, you say. Oh, yeah, he taught me. Well, he didn't set out to be no teacher, mind you, but I couldn't be around Chris and not pick up a oh, mite here and a mite there. What did he teach you? I'd like to hear if you could remember. Oh, I remember. It was mostly things to see, I guess. Like the rust color marshes get this time of year. When the sky turns the color of blue on that old platter. That's cobalt blue. That's painting term, cobalt blue. And he showed me the red barn in the cover bridge that he is forever painting. I was used to all my life, never noticed. And he taught me that old chairs are sometimes more than old chairs be thrown away. Some of them's really beautiful. He used to say them very same words about the old doors and the brick houses up along the common. That's when they started taking the old doors out, putting in new ones ordered from Sears Roadblock. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that brick houses ain't red, but mostly green and brown, and that moonlight and snow ain't white tall, but all kinds of colors, and the elm trees is most decorative when their leaves are gone? He taught me. Taught me that a man could get drunk and not be no different, only just more so. <laughs> and everybody's got more good qualities than bad. Oh, he taught me lots. I ain't never forgotten none of it. Lived over and over the time he spent here. Over and over it since he died. He must have left you things to remember him by. Well, just now told you. I was thinking of more substantial things. 
Substantial? In what way? Uh, that's right, Abby. Our memories are the most substantial things we have. <coughs> but I was thinking of other things. Uh, souvenirs? I wonder if you're right about memories, though. I know nobody can't take them away from us, but what happens to them when we take them away from the place they belong in? Those kind of get left behind. I've been kind of worried about that question lately. Oh, why have you? Because I'm going away from here, Mr. Davis. I'm going to Chicago this afternoon. Brother's wife died and left him four small children. I got to go. It's the will of God. I don't want to go one bit. Haggis. He thinks on their account. I needn't worry, Abby. You'll take your memories with you wherever you go. Well, I won't see the red barn no more, nor the brick houses, nor the covered bridge, nor the hill pasture, nor none of them. The places he liked to paint. Well, I used to take him hot coffee whilst he's painting. <laughs> and you knitted a sweater for him, too. He write you about that sweater? You must know him. He'd written me about everything. Everything about me? I was his best friend. <laughs> I was pretty once. You don't need to apologize, Abby. Well, I ain't shamed. Only I sooner you didn't tell Doctor nor Ms. Haggett nor the girl. You know what folks saw about him around here, him just being an artist and all. And they never understood him. And they wouldn't understood him no better for liking me. Wanting to keep their good opinion and a place here at Dr. Haggett, but I ain't shamed. I needn't worry, Abby. I respect your memories. I won't tell anyone. But you must have other things of his. Uh, little sketches, for instance? Oh, I'd show you something a lot better than sketches. Uh, what's that, Abby? Well, he painted a great big picture of me. Been over my bed all these years. Uh, I'd like to see it, Abby. Show me the portrait. Show it to me now. Oh, I'll show you. It's that makes me feel worst about leaving here. Got to come out to my room to see it. Out this way. Oh, I forgot. Uh, is somebody out there? Oh, that real city maid's come take my place. Why well, wouldn't let her see me take no man to Maroon or live 14 years? What harm would it do? Well, she'd tell Ms. Haggett. Oh, I'd rather the Haggett's didn't know about her little talk. Uh, when can I see you again? Where are you staying? At the hotel. Can you come there to see me? I'll get round after dinner. And bring the portrait. What, that great big portrait? Abby, if you ever need money, I'm no rich man, and you know that. But if you ever are in need, I'd buy anything of Chris's you had to sell. Oh, I wouldn't sell you nothing, Mr. Davis. Uh, not to his best friend? For all time's sake? Well, I couldn't take money for things he left. Uh, think it over, Abby. I'm trying to get all his pictures together in one place where they could keep each other company. Is that what you're doing? Oh, well, I think that's just lovely of you. Well, I couldn't sell you nothing. I give you. What, the portrait? Oh, no, no. You mean that. I have to think a lot about that. Uh, of course you would. But to his best friend. Oh, no, there's anybody on this earth but you. <gasps> Here comes one. I'm through the kitchen now. Abby, I'm counting on you. Yeah, you better get along now. I don't want him to see you. Oh, and Mr. Davis, don't tell nobody what you know about Chris and me. Twerk nobody worth mentioning. Now I ain't got the front, Abby. <gasps> you was taking awful chances. Can't get me mixed up in this last thing. What's he doing here? I seen him out by the barn. I seen you wave. What was it you wanted? What are you doing hanging around our barn? Just be terrible, Ralph. I had something to tell her. What? What was it, Warren? I just come to an important decision in my life. You come to an important decision, Warren? Well, watch the door. Abby? Well, how can I watch Storm Warren gets me so interested? It ain't no affair of yours. Well, I wouldn't be so interested if and it was. You don't want me to hear though. We ain't got no secrets from you, Abby. What is it, Warren? Harold Sherman's been after me to sell my stock and business so as he can have all the contracting around here. He only wants to give me $500. Oh? It ain't enough, but I made up my mind to take it. Warren, what you want to go and do that for? Because so I can go to New York and study art. Warren, that's an awful rash step to take. That means you'll be going away from here. I won't do it only on one condition. What is the condition? You gotta come with me. <gasps> oh, Warren, you know Ma'll never let me go. You saw the way she took on this morning. Well, I wasn't figuring to let your Ma know nothing about it. Warren Creamer, you ain't proposing to e low. If Susie likes me as much as she says she does, she won't take no chances of me going off without her, will you, Susie? Well, as if there hadn't been enough happening in this house today without you bringing in this e talk, getting Susie all upset again. It ain't no talk. 
Her ma got me good and mad this morning, and I'm going to show her. And there ain't no use to be wasting no time about it. Oh, Warren, I think you're wonderful. Don't you think so, Abby? He won't take him down. Well, do come and mark for it. You give your clothes to Abby to take with her on the train when she goes to Boston tonight. And I'll bring the truck here to fetch Abby's trunk. And you come with me like you would see in a rock. And I'll drive you out to the junction and put you on the train there. Then I meet the both of you in Boston and we get married. Guess there ain't much wrong in that scheme. Susie, you listen to any more of this kind of talk, I'm going to tell your ma. You wouldn't do that, Abby. Why wouldn't I? It's my bounden duty. But you said you had nothing against artists. Well, I ain't, but lots of folks around here has. Haven't you never cared for any man, Abby? Well, you think I'd be watching out now if I hadn't? Say you'll help her, Abby. Well, if I do, won't be on your count, young man. When a girl gets into state, you've got Susie, and she needs somebody to look out for her. Make sure she does get married. Then just go flying off the handle regardless. I'm in love. I know. You better get out of here, Warren Creamer, before you get caught. I'll have the truck at the front door at 4.30. That early, Warren? It takes too soon than I'll be taking the 5 o'clock to Boston. You stop that! Susie, get upstairs and fix yourself. You let your mom and pop see you this day? 4.30. Like to know what's come over this house this morning. Well, this is for Dr. Hagelman, I believe. Where he's been living 30 years. I wonder if I can see him Oh, well, could if he is here, he ain't here. Well, you are? Well, I wouldn't think so very. Haggett family's <laughs> awful prop to meals. I'll well, come in and wait down until the wall in. Watch out for the paint. Well, I'm used to paint. Then you must be at it. You don't know me. No, but I've heard an awful lot about you. What did you hear and where did you hear it? Well, I heard that you uh, have a kind nature and uh, appreciate modern painting. Then I appreciate... I better try to get Dr. Haggett on telephone. He ought never left this house today. <laughs> don't hurry him. Let me enjoy myself. Well, I've seen the old brick fronts on the common and the uh, red barn behind this house and now I've seen you. I really expected you to be wearing a gingham dress. A gingham dress? Uh, you know, a red and white check gingham, the same as you used to wear. Well, you know what I used to wear. A shopping trip. I ain't sorry to see you. Come home, Dr. Haggin. More going on in this house this morning night than grab. Go back in the kitchen and stay here. Uh, so this is Dr. Haggin? What can I do for you? My God. Won't you sit down, Mr. Rosen? Patient. No, 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 no. Thank you. Jeez. Dr. Haggett, uh, in the course of your uh, professional career, you had a patient, a young friend of mine, a painter, a painter with whom I confess I had personal difficulties. Ten years ago, his death left me with that regret we all feel in such cases. Uh, recently, I've come across some letters, the letters which he wrote to me while he lived here under your care. They showed me how in a small way uh, I might ease my conscience regarding him. <clears throat> Dr. Haggett, my friend Christopher Bean, died owing you $100. Now, so I computed the interest on that unpaid bill at 6% and the total for 10 years comes to exactly $160. Allow me to offer you my check for the sum. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, don't mention it. Uh, in saying this, I fulfill a sacred obligation to a poor devil whom I might have helped before he passed beyond all human aid. Of course, I uh, know that we're all mortal, but I shall go back to New York feeling... A happier man. You take the words out of my mouth, Dr. Haggis. Uh, I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, Mr. Rosen, and I see ours make better paying patients than what I thought. Uh, <laughs> but there's a question that occurs to me that I'd like to ask you. Don't hesitate, Dr. Haggard, anything. Uh, are you by any chance on the point of inquiring if I have something in the way of pictures Chris Bean left behind the, that you can take away as souvenirs? No, 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 no. I don't do things that way. I don't come begging. Well, I didn't say you did. I only asked. Well, if you'll allow me to be businesslike, I was on the point of asking about any such pictures you may still have in your possession. I assume, of course, that they're your property. The boy had no family, and any pictures he left here, even those which he didn't give to you personally, uh, may be considered security against that unpaid bill and so forth, but to you. Dr. Hayden, I'll give you a thousand dollars for the lot. A thousand dollars? For the lot, understand. A thousand dollars for Chris Bean's pictures? I can't go any higher. I hope you don't exaggerate. A thousand dollars? 
That is my offer. Take it or leave it, I consider it very generous. Now, I'm not saying anything against your offer, Mr. Rosen. The only trouble is you ain't the first. There was a man here not two hours ago. Wait, was it with the same proposition? No, not quite the same. Well, you didn't sell him your Christopher Bean pictures, did you? No, I gave them to him. What? But there was one Chris painted of the covered bridge and another... You gave away the old covered bridge? Dr. Haggard, you've been swindled. You don't have to tell me that. But, but how in God's name did you... He, he sent a telegram. He was coming from New York. What was his name? I'm not much good at remembering names. Let's see now. I, I ought to have that telegram somewhere. Oh, here it is. Maxwell Davenport. That was his name. Maxwell Davenport. Maxwell Davenport? That's right, yes. You, you mean to tell me that, that, that Davenport let you give him? Well, I thought they was no good, and he said they wasn't. Davenport said that? Uh, yes, Davenport. Here, if you don't believe me. Do you know him? Do I know Davenport? Yes, of course I know Davenport. But I never would have believed such a thing of him. Do you have any witnesses? I've got my wife and daughter. <laughs> then I tell you, doctor, this may not be so serious. I think I see how we can fix Davenport. <laughs> He's the uh, art critic on the New York Tribune, the best we've got down in the big city, and everybody's looking up to him. Now, he would hardly care to have it known what a dirty trick he played on you to get those pictures free when they're worth a thousand dollars. So this is what we do. I have with me a bill of sale for what he took, all made out in advance by my lawyer. You sign it. And I give you a check for $1,000. Then we get you and your wife and daughter to down to the courthouse and swear out an affidavit about every word that great art critic said, especially that the pictures were no good. Then you leave the rest to me. <laughs> I think I see how we can fix Mr. Davenport. <laughs> Is Dr. Haggard in? He's expecting well, He's got a gentleman with him. You can have a chair and rest yourself. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Tell me, are you by any chance the famous Abby? <laughs> Does everybody from New York know me? Then you are. What luck that you're still here. The covered bridge, the brick houses on the common, the red barn, and now Abby herself. Dr. Haggett, can't stand no more folks. Never saw me before in my life. Trace it through her. Call me some of the Don't be alarmed, please, Abby. Is this Dr. Haggard? Yes, it is. I'm Davenport. Who? Maxwell Davenport. I sent you a night letter yesterday from New York. Don't let me disturb you, Bo. I'll wait outside. No, no, no. Don't you go. <laughs> is this Davenport? Yes, it's Davenport. But it ain't the same. What? It ain't the same, I tell you. And if this is Davenport, who was the other? Don't say another word, Dr. Haggard. Say no more when we find out where we stand. Rosie? May I ask what the devil you're doing here? Do you think you ought to swear at me, Mr. Davenport? You've got no cause to swear at me in public. Print what you like about me, but don't insult me to my face. I should have known the scavengers would be gathering. Excuse me, Dr. Haggard, but this man who exploits artists and treats their work It's like not the artists I exploit, it's the customers. And it's men like me who justify the existence of you art critics. Where would you be writing about your tactile values, your limpid channels, something or other highlights? Go on for not creating interest in art by building up prices. And you've fouled the whole business of dealing with art with your tricks and balls. Just a minute, please. This is my house, and I got a right to know what's going on. You say you're Mr. Davenport. Mr. Rosen says you are. A right you must be. Would you please tell me what this is all about? It's about one of the world's greatest injustices, Dr. Haggard, which I am doing my small part to set right. You once had for your patient a poor boy, a painter. Uh, yes, I know, Chris B. Oh, I'm glad that you're remembering, Dr. Haggard. Now this boy that I mentioned. Died owing me a hundred dollars and you come to pay it. No, no, Dr. Haggard, don't say that boy, Chris Bean, owed any man anything. It is we, all of us, who stand in everlasting debt to him, as the world always stands in debt to men of great genius. Genius? Our Chris Bean of genius? Won't you sit down? I've come to gather any information you may have concerning his life here for a critical biography of him that I'm writing. You're writing a book about Chris B? Yes, that is my occupation at the moment. Whatever gave you that idea? Uh, haven't you read of the sensations his works have been making in New York? Uh, haven't you read The Last Atlantic Monthly? That only came out yesterday, Mr. Davenport. Quite. Well, Dr. Haggard, art is long. And the world is often slow to recognize it. Only now, 10 years after his death, has Chris Bean had his first 
exhibition in New York City. Only now do we realize that he's not merely one of the great American painters of our time, but one of the greatest masters of all time. Uh, our Chris Bean was. Your Chris Bean, who painted and drank and coughed his short life away here in this village, in which he wrote to his friend Davis, alas, also dead, the exquisite group of letters published yesterday in the Atlantic Monthly. Our Chris Bean. So that's the letters you folks have been finding going through your desk. You guessed it, Doctor. Uh, uh, Hannah, come in here. This is my wife, Mr. Davenport. Mr. Davenport? Uh, no, don't say a word, Hannah. I'll, I'll explain later. Mr. Rosen. Mr. Davenport, we live a long way from New York. I'm nothing but just a simple country doctor. I'll have to admit, as much as I liked Crispin, I never would have expected him to get nowhere. Uh, I'm not exaggerating, Dr. Haggard. When I say that no painter of our times has gone as far as he. Well, now, does this mean folks is paying money for Chris Bean's pictures? If only the dealers could find more to sell. Uh, there are so few in these days, they bring large prices. As much as $50? Not less than five and as much as 10000 Dollars each? And you offered me a measly thousand for the lot. I wasn't the first doctor and say no more. A generous offer for Mr. Rosen. I only hope I arrive in time to stop his game. God almighty, the God! What? No, I won't say no more neither. I don't feel well. Here's another telegram. I'm just calm for you, Dr. Haggard. Uh, another telegram? No, really, Rosen. I would have expected you to go higher than a thousand. I'm not a rich man, Mr. Davenport. My business is a small one. Hmm. Stick to your forgeries. They're more respectable than swindling honest men who aren't equipped to defend themselves. Now, Dr. Haggard, I don't usually mix in buying and selling. But to protect you, I'll, I will gladly put proper values on any Christopher Bean can that you may have. Do you mind explaining this telegram to me? Why, it's clear enough. The Metropolitan Museum, that's in New York City, offers you $7,500 for the Christopher Bean canvas of your choice. Mr. Davenport, you see in me a desperate man. Desperate, Doctor? The owner of pictures worth a fortune? How do you know I got any such pictures? From the last Atlantic Monthly, a Bean enumerates in his letters seven of the pictures he painted and left here, the covered bridge, the brick houses on the common, the red barn, the but, I guess I didn't take him as serious as I should have. Don't reproach yourself, Dr. Haggard. You weren't the only one. Oh. Good God, Dr. Haggard. You haven't let anything happen to them. Uh, I must have them somewhere. There's two of them I can't account for just at the moment. But, but if he left seven, I must have the rest. Did you ever hear of folks throwing away oil paintings? Valuable oil paintings? I'll look for them. I'll find them, though, and, and when I do, I'll pay them the honor they deserve. I'll hang them all up here in the dining room. And I don't know as I'm interested in selling them. Not now that I know what they're worth. At least, at least not for no small sums like I've been offered. Now, I'd like for all of you to go away and leave me to eat my dinner in peace and talk matters over with my family. This is all kind of sudden. I've got to think. Um, but you'll, uh... Let me come again this afternoon. What for? To get your recollections of Chris Bean's life here. After I've had my dinner. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Let me leave this number of the Atlantic with you. Uh, Bean's letters are in it. I brought it along for a list of pictures you mentioned. And you'll enjoy reading what he says about you. Thanks. Well, goodbye. Now then, Doctor, about that man that was here before me, if you don't know what, he, what his real name was, what he looked like. You get out, too. All right, Doctor, all right. But I'll be back. And don't do anything final until you hear it from me. One chance I ever had to make any money and it slipped through my fingers. I can't stand to look at that spot on the wall where my picture was without just boiling. I'm going upstairs to my room to lay down. <laughs>
Well, now all them city folks is done. Guess I can set the table for him. I don't want no dinner. You don't? You don't? Who's to blame for this? Well, you can't blame me. Which one of us was that took him in and gave him the old bond to pay him? You hadn't any more use for his pictures than I did. Oh. Can't have you quarreling like this, my last day. Mrs. Haggett and I'll quarrel if we want to without the help from you, young lady. Dr. Haggett, you ain't never spoke me like that before. Get back in your kitchen. <laughs> Can't stand no more talk. Now, the important thing is for us not to lose our heads here. There's only two things that matter. The first man wasn't Mr. Davenport, and since he wasn't, who was he? Well, what's that matter now? Your pa gave him them paintings. He does matter. Got it out of Ponder Fault. That's right, he did. Yeah, we can get him back. If it wasn't for that $50, he gave Amy. That $50 wasn't for no backside of the paint. You got to find him, Milton. How? I don't even know what his real name is. All I do know is gone back to New York, a happier man. I'll find him somehow, though. And when I do, I'll give him a thrashing, he'll remember. Oh, he's younger than you are. He'll give you the thrashing. Oh, all right, then I'll get a lawyer. Yes, I'll get a lawyer after him and bring suit against him. Lawsuits cost you money when you ain't sure of winning. <laughs> Tain't as though we minded part with what he took. Well, we didn't know then what was what. And I called both of you in to have a good look at an honest man. Oh, that wicked, sneaky, thieving, greedy scoundrel just makes me sick. That's what it does. That's it, Ada. Our baby said it, Hannah. It's the greed of it that turns my stomach to greed. If Davenport ain't lying, I let that greedy crook snatch between ten and twenty thousand dollars out of my head. Oh, Milton, he spoke of wanting to do some uh, business with you. Now, couldn't you tell him you won't have no dealings with him unless he brings back them two pictures? Ma, wasn't all that business talk just to pull the wool over Pa's eyes? Oh, the wicked scheming greed! How many pictures of Chris Beans were there? Davenport said seven. And you said some shall throw away valuable oil paintings. So what happened to the other five then? That's right, Ada. Our baby's got more head than either of us. Abby! Abby! Are you sure you made a thorough search of the attic? Of the attic, Dr. Haggard? Yes, this morning when that first fella came here. Yeah, Dr. Haggard. And you didn't see no signs, no I pictures. I didn't see no signs. Get out. <laughs> Amy, you go look. Uh, uh, Susie, come down here, Susie. Well, what do you want with Susie for? Well, we ain't asked her yet. She may know something. What is it, Pa? What do you want? Have you seen the old pictures of Chris Beans laying around? Oh, is that all? Is that all? Is that all? Don't talk like a fool. Oh, what's come over you, Holly? Uh, answer my question. Yes, of course I have. Where? Last I seen him, they was in the barn. In the barn? Yes, Pa. Uh, how many? I don't know, rightly. Eight or ten, I guess. Uh, eight or ten? Yes, Pa. Uh, they was in the old box stall. Uh, I'm in and out of that barn all day long, taking the Ford out and putting it up again. I ain't seen no pictures. When did you see them last? Oh, it couldn't have been so long ago. I remember showing them to uh, Warren Creamer. Aha, then that's what's happened to him. Warren Creamer stole him. He ain't. He wouldn't. They was in the barn. You showed them to Warren. They ain't there now. I haven't seen them. Warren must have stolen them. No. Oh, you get your Warren over here this minute. No, here. I'll get him. Pa, please. It ain't no use, Milton. Why ain't it? Warren didn't steal him. How do you know he didn't? I burned him. <laughs> you what? I put him on the bonfire and I burnt him. Uh, all eight or ten? Oh, I'd have thought there was more. Oh, you'd have thought there was more. Ten thousand and over for everyone. You'd have thought there was more. You'd have thought there was terrible things just to me. Don't keep on saying that. <laughs> you want to fall down on your knees, Hannah, and beg forgiveness of both your children. Abby was right. There isn't a single painting up in that attic. Oh, your pa knows that. They ain't none anywhere. They took up so much room, I just burnt the lot of them. You never. <laughs> then we'll just have to get to work and get back that pair we gave away this morning. Just my God. Oh, yeah. Dr. H takes conscientious care of me. 
knows nothing of medicine but looks like a gargoyle, that amuses me. What's he saying, Ma? Dr. H is me. That's what Chris Bean wrote about me in his letters. I beg him to let me do a portrait of him, but all my pleading avails to nothing. His notions of art belong to the lower animals. <laughs> well, maybe if you'd let him do a portrait of you, he'd be better off now. Wouldn't you use no portrait of yourself to patch the chicken house rope? <laughs> you can read the rest, Susie. Maybe say something kind about your mom. This angel of devotion is both sister and nurse to me, and more than both. I know that her care is adding months to my life because she, and only she, sees merit in what I paint. She is the single comfort I have found in my life here, and in her own way, she is beautiful. Well, I liked that boy. Yes, I encouraged him. Uh -huh. But, but, Ma, that ain't you. That's Abby. <laughs> Morning, she brings me our hot coffee to drink. <laughs> our coffee? That don't matter now. Well, it matters to me that a man I do kindly do carry on behind my back with a help. But Ma, don't say that. Say she was beautiful. She never was. God almighty. What? Chris, what? Chris Bean did paint one portrait while he was here. I remember he did. Who did he paint it of? Of Abby. That's so he did. Oh, you mean that great big portrait? I uh, wonder what's become of it. She had it hanging in her room since he died. Uh, Ada, go in and see if it's still there. But, Pa, if it is, it belongs to Abby. Ada, wait. Here we are in the worst crisis of the Depression with a fortune in the house, and you try to tell me it belongs to Abby. Is Abby capable of knowing what such a picture's worth? Susan, I am surprised at you. <laughs> and after your Pa's just been swindled himself this morning. I think it's about time Pa stood up for his right. You and what about Abby's right? I ain't going to do nothing that ain't fair and square. Don't talk so loud. You want Abby to hear? Well, I won't stand by and see you take advantage of Abby. Oh. Just let me go, Milton. Pay any attention. We got one thing to do now and one thing only, and that's to find out if Abby is planning to take that portrait to Chicago with her. Uh, call her in here and ask her. Yes, she'd get on to you. Uh, that's right. Not that we got anything shameful to conceal, but she'd get on to us. Well, now. I wouldn't hesitate, it was me. No, wouldn't hesitate. I'd walk right in there, take that picture down like it wasn't of no account. There's a point of conscience here. Uh, conscience? I've got to think. Well, then shut your eyes, Milton. You know you always think better with your eyes shut. <laughs> That's right. Now, what? <clears throat> well, one way of looking at it, that portrait's our property, too. Abby's no artist model. She's our help. We was paying her $30 a month in keep. Oh, we was only paying her 15 Well, the principle's the same. And the question is, did she have any right to let him paint it on time we paid for? Your conscience is clear, Milton. Plain as day, that picture belongs to us, lady. Took it right in there, get it. But, but what did I say? Well, lady, I use her imagination, wreck the room, tear down the window curtains, and, and turn the mattress over there. You, Paul, tell her a burglar must have got it. Um, just a simple country doctor. I don't care for money. It's only for my loved ones that got to have it. We've yeah. got to get a move on. Hustle now, Ada. When you've got it, you take it down. Back stairs and up to your room. I did under the bed. Hurry, hurry. Abby feels bad. I'll give her something. <laughs> Abby's out there. Oh, how about the pain? Well, that's there, too. What's it like? No, oh, it's terrible. Oh, well, it's some comfort to know it's still all right. Now, now, what's Abby doing? Oh, she's fixing dinner. Hmm. Tell her... Tell her she ought to come in here and set the table. But, but then she'd stay right there in the kitchen. No, no, in here, set the table. Oh, um, um, oh, get out of the way, I'll call her. Sit down, Mr. Oh, Abby! Oh, Abby! You've got to talk to her. I'm, I'm sorry I spoke so rough to you just now, Abby. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, it isn't, Abby. Why, Dr. Haggett couldn't rest and he'd apologize. It's all right. Now you can set the table for dinner. Yeah. It's nice of you to wait on us on your last day, Abby. Oh, tain't nothing. Oh, yes, it is, Abby. We appreciate it so. Dr. Haggett and me want the new maid in the house and all. 
tain't nothing. It wouldn't have seemed natural to have the new maid waiting on table with you still in the house, Abby. No, guess not. The new maid's out here. Tell her to go and take a walk around the village. Oh, Ada, Ada, you can forget about the burglar. What about a burglar? Oh, this is a little joke for you, Ada. I'll tell you later. Where you going, Abby? Well, just out the kitchen, get the mustard pickle. Oh, I don't think we need any mustard pickles. Do you, Milton? Uh, I'll be frank with you, Abby. Them mustard pickles don't sit good with me. Uh, Abby, didn't you hear us? We said we didn't care for mustard pickles. Why, well, go and get the watermelon preserve. I always like my watermelon preserve. Oh, that's so, Milton. You always have like them particular. Uh, I know I have, and I can't think of a thing against them now. Oh, didn't you want to talk to Abby, Milton? Uh, that's right, Hannah, I did. What do you want to talk to me about? Uh, well, about several things, Abby. Let's see now. To begin with, I wanted what to know... If, uh, she says she don't want to take a walk. You tell her she either takes a walk or she goes back to Boston. Back to Boston? I know what it is I want to talk to you about, ha uh, Abby. It's about the new maid. What do you think of her? She's a nice girl. Uh, of course she's a nice girl. A very nice girl. Mrs. Haggard wouldn't have anyone else. Uh, but think now, Abby. Think carefully. Will she give us the same satisfaction you've given us? Well, mighty kind you say that, Dr. Haggett. But in all fairness, I had 15 years to study your manners and ways. Now I ain't saying she'll be out of the way you like your chowder, or none of that, without being told. But, well, she's a nice girl. She finds she likes to play some nice. Oh, don't you think she will, Abby? Well, maybe she will, maybe she won't, Miss Haggett. I'll get dinner on the table. We'll talk after. Oh, but Abby, you haven't finished that on the table yet. Well, I know, but I can't stand here talking. With my biscuits for lunch. Well, now, what did you how could I? Why didn't you stop? Oh, you see me try to jump off oh, like a face, and it was a cowardly way to go at it. Uh, it was your idea. I wouldn't have done it. Keep quiet. Can you hear anything? Not a sound. Uh, Ada'll be in the room now. She'll come out with her picture in the hands, and uh, Hannah, come out there and do something. Oh, I can't. You go yourself. Uh, I got to answer. No, you don't. Susie, you get that. Uh, call her in here, and I'll talk to her some more. What have you got to oh. talk to her about uh, now? Let me think. Don't hurry me. I'll, yeah. I'll think of something. Well, you can't take all day. She'll find Amy uh, in there. Uh, I'll ask her not to leave. That's what I'll do. I'll feed with her. Uh, no, you can't do that. She might not leave. And if call she does, leave, think it'll of be something. you. No, but she would have if the biscuits hadn't been burned. Oh. I was just lifting the picture off the hook and I looked over my shoulder and there she stood with her head in the oven. Oh, well, uh -huh. we'll just have to try something else. Now, we'll have our dinner like there wasn't nothing wrong and, and then I'll send her out on an errand. Hey, you help me finish setting the table down here. When you're done whispering and plotting over there, New York's calling, Pa. New York again? I couldn't get the name. Sounds to me like Miedler and Company. I won't speak to him. I won't speak to no more from New York. Tell him I'm out. Tell him I've gone away. Tell him I... You I've... can tell your own lies, Pa. Oh, all right, I will. A lot of help I get from you, young lady. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Haggard. Who? Go ahead. Can't hear you. What? The covered bridge. How much? How much? I'll think it over. Call me tomorrow. What, what is it, Milton? He wants to pay me $12,000 for Chris Bean's picture of the covered bridge. If it's in good condition. If it's in good condition. Can you beat that if it's in good condition? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. But that's a picture I painted my flower beads on the back of, and I sold it this morning for fifty dollars. I know it is. <laughs> well, got dinner ready, folks. You can all sit down now. <laughs> you can all sit down. Dinner's ready.
Bless this food to our use and to us in thy soul. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Uh, we haven't met yet, Mr. Davenport. I'm the other daughter, Susan. Ma said for me to apologize for keeping you waiting so long. Uh, pa went out after dinner. We don't know where he is nor what's become of him. <coughs> I don't mind waiting, and if your father's errand is what I expect it is, I hope it may prove successful. Yes. Well, seeing as you aren't doing anything at the moment, I've got kind of a funny favor to ask of you. Please. Uh, you wouldn't tell him Pa asked it, would you? I can keep a secret. I was thinking of eloping this afternoon. My dear child. <laughs> yeah, and it's just providential you turning up because all I need is an art critic. If you're counting on me to break the news to your parents, Oh, I'm... no, nothing like that. Well, suppose you explain more fully then. There's always some reason for an elopement, even a man's married, or the girl's mother and father don't approve of him. That's my reason. Why don't they? Because he's an artist, and they got no use for artists. Is he a good artist? Oh, he thinks he is, but I'm not fit to judge. So I thought maybe you'd run around, take a look at his pictures, and tell me what you think. You're a Yankee, too. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I naturally conclude that if his pictures don't measure up, you'll think twice before you marry him. Oh, I'd have him anyways. I'd have him if he was the most terrible painter in the world. I just want to know the truth for myself. For my, I just want to know the worst for my own information. I see you belong to the higher type of Yankee. <laughs> I don't understand. Fearless of both risk and reality. No, I just want to know if you ought to paint pictures or houses. <laughs> I warn you, if I don't like the pictures, oh, I... Oh, don't tell him. Are you wise to want to know the truth yourself? I'll show you I'm not afraid. I've got two of Warren's drawings right here. They're only little ones, so they don't do him justice. But you can tell me what you think right to my face. This one's my sister's salmon, and this is my dead duck. That's <laughs> it. They're curious. Very curious. I'd certainly say a pupil of Christopher Beans. Yes, he was when he was a little boy, only 13 years old. But he's been painting on his own ever since. I see they have their own individuality, too. That's good. Does that mean they're bad? No, 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 no. It means they make me want to see more of his work than to meet him. Oh, that's easy. I'll show you where. I'll take you. But uh, can you come now? You see, there isn't much time. At what time's the elopement? At 4.30. I've got to catch the Boston train with Abby. Uh, is Abby leaving too? Yes, mm. only Abby's going on to Chicago. Oh, here's Pa. Mm. Why, Pa, what's the matter? Where have you been? I've been around. You look awful. I feel awful. Oh, yes. Uh, I was just taking Mr. Davenport out to see the village, Pa. Uh, yes, take him out. You don't object. No, no, your young man should certainly have things to tell me. I must talk with Abby, too, before she leaves. Oh, um, you'll have plenty of time to see Abby. It's just across the street. Which way? The left or right? This way, Mr. Davenport. I've been all over, up to the hill pasture, down to the covered bridge, up to the graveyard. What in the world you go there for? Looking for that scoundrel who robbed me this morning. Well, did you think he died and buried himself? <laughs> He's still there painting somewhere. Painting? I found out that much at the hotel. He checked in this morning and he ain't checked out. Well, if the pictures are in the room, why didn't you get them? He took them to the bank. They're oh. in the vault. The bank wouldn't let me have them. Well, he's gone out again. He's got his lunch and painting things with him. His name's Talon. Talon? <laughs> what L or two? Uh, two. Uh, Abby, I've been running and running all afternoon. Uh, bring me a cracker and a glass of milk. Wouldn't you like something hot, Dr. Haggard? Oh, I've got no time for anything hot. There's been three more telephone calls from New York since you've been gone, and seven telegrams came. And, and they ain't got no time for telegrams either. Look, this kind of thing is not good for no man of my age. This morning I was a peaceful country doctor with gentle thoughts of a medical description, and I coveted nothing, not even my collection. Look at me now. Once you get started on a thing like this, though, once you let it get hold of you... Oh, Milton, don't take on, so you got to stick to business. That's what I'm doing. 
I remembered Abby leaves at five o'clock. We can't let her take that portrait with her. It's the only one we can be sure to get our hands on. Well, you'll have to work on her then. I ain't up to no more today. That's what I just come back home to do. Leave it to me. You started it, but I got to finish it. Thank you, Abby. That's just what I need. But a nice pork chop could heat up for you. Uh, look. Oh, Dr. Hager ain't never seen you in such a state. It's all them New York folks coming here. And they'll all be coming back any minute, too. Well, why you bother with them, Dr. Haggett? Can't avoid responsibility in this life, Abby. I wouldn't mind so much if this room looked all right. It's that patch above the fireplace where Ada's picture was. Well, it could wash off where it smoked. Oh, no, there ain't time for that. We could hang one of Warren Kramer's pictures. No, Hannah, Warren's pictures ain't right for that. What we need is something more fitting, a portrait, maybe. Well, then, uh, yes, I Abby, am. ain't you got a picture Chris Bean painted of you before he died? Got my portrait. Well, if that ain't just the thing, we'll hang that there. Oh, Dr. Haggett. Uh, just till you go. Well, I'd like to oblige. Certainly like to oblige. Why couldn't have my picture hanging up there? Wouldn't look right. But why wouldn't it? Well, what folks think? They come into your dining room, seen a great big picture of me hanging there, scraping carrots. But why do I care what people would say? Ain't this a democracy? I'd rather have you there scraping carrots than half these society women can't do nothing. But my picture ain't even got a frame. That don't matter either. Anything to cover up that patch. Oh, don't refuse him, Abby. Look, Abby. Oh, you could say no Dr. Haggett. A much better way than stealing would have been. This has got to be done, but it's got to be done legitimately. Well, she ain't given up to you yet. She will, only you can't take it more than one step at a time. I got it all thought out. Well, here it is. That's very nice of you, Abby. I appreciate that. <coughs> Look better if they had a frame. Oh, there's no time for frames, either. <gasps> Your mom's picture in the upstairs hall that's just about the size of this one, and it's got a beautiful frame. Well, why don't you hang that up? Oh, no, she's been dead so long, she's just as happy in the upstairs hall. <laughs> I'll do. Oh, no, 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 Abby, you go get it for the doctor. Oh, but I wouldn't want Dr. Haggett to take the frame off his mom's picture. It would give, you, give me real pleasure to offer you this little mark of my esteem, Abby. <laughs> but my picture will look too dressed up in that frame. If I want to put my mother's frame around your picture, Abby, it ain't for you to say it isn't fitting. Oh, dear me, no offense. Guess you know best. I said I'd pay her something, and I will. I'll give her $25. You'll never get your money back. <laughs> it ain't for you who burned up a fortune to fret me for risking $25. I'll, I'll be frank with you, though. Work for them telegrams and telephone calls, I wouldn't be risking 25 cents on them. <laughs> Look at it now. There's a great big dab of red paint right on the nose. And the hand is blue. Maybe she just done the wash. Uh, what's that she's holding? It's a knife. What? She is scraping carrots. <laughs> well, here it is. I feel so embarrassed, uh, Miss Haggett. That's too heavy for you, Abby. Clear these things right down to the rim. Uh, now we'll just see if it fits. Careful you don't scratch yourself on their mossy nails. Oh, that wouldn't matter now, Abby. Oh, it, it's too small. No, Hannah, it's a little tight up there, maybe. Funny, it was always loose on Ma. <laughs> no. Look, now wouldn't you say that frame had just been made for? Now, now we'll just have a look. Oh, who'd ever thought my portrait could look like that? Wouldn't Chris Bean be proud if he could see it now? Oh, I wish he could see it. It's like you, Abby. There's no denying that. All the time he's painting it, he kept saying, Abby, this is my masterpiece I'm painting now. <laughs> uh, are you sure he said that, Abby? Oh, yeah. When it was done, he thanked me. He thanked me just like I'd done something for him. Boys like him. Take right for boys like him. Nice to you. Now, don't take on so, Abby. You'll, you'll have me crying, too. You'll have us all crying. Ada, come down here and see Abby's portrait. Oh, you're all so good to me. Oh, we're fond of you, Abby. We're fond of you, Abby. Look, Ada. 
Don't you think that makes a handsome effect? Oh, I should say so. Uh, now we got two Abbeys in here. One of them standing here in the flesh, and the other there in an oil painting. <laughs> Seems a pity to let both of them leave us, don't it? Yeah. Oh, don't know how to thank you, Dr. Haggett, and I won't never forget. If seeing the boat don't give me an idea. Well, Betty, it's a good one, Milton. Oh, Dr. Haggett couldn't have nothing but good ideas. <laughs> I'll give it to you just as it comes to me. Since you're leaving us after all these years, Abby, it'd be awful nice if you left your portrait behind you here with us. Leave it behind? I mean, go away as ours? Well, oh, I wouldn't ask you to make such a sacrifice without giving you something in return. Well, how could you give me anything in return? Well, I don't say we could give you anything equal to what the portrait would mean to us, but I guess $25 would come in kind of handy in Chicago. Oh, make it 50, Pa. Uh, all right, I will make it 50. Um, yes, I will, Abby. Comes pretty hard to be handing out presents that size these days. I will make it 50. Guess there ain't much you can say against that. Oh, I ain't got nothing to say again, Dr. Haggard. It's awful kind of you, but... This is the bed, you see? It's set. You're wonderful, Milton. With everything open and above board. Oh, but I could never seem a way clear part of my portrait. Uh, Abby, you amaze me. Huh? Money like that about things have to walk. You better think twice before you refuse what I must say is a generous offer. How'd it be, Abby, if, if we was to have a... A nice little photograph of your portrait made, and you could take that with you to Chicago and oh, leave you your big it's... portrait here. I declare, is that a clever idea you made of stuff? I never would have thought of such a thing myself. Oh, got me so upset, don't know what to think. Had no idea you was all so fond of me. Abby! Oh, no, I hadn't, Miss Haggett. Knew Susie was. Had no idea about you and Ada and the oh. doctor. It's awful hard for me to deny you. Only... But don't deny us, Abby. Say yes and shake hands on it. I know. I'll get a photograph made for you. Get it made in Chicago and send it back. But, but, no, but no, don't you see it? It's not the same. You didn't, you didn't mean, mean so much. All you have me hanging there in the oil painting. Would we want anyone we didn't love hanging in our dining room? But I got awful used to looking at that portrait. What, Abby, that's no better than if you was to sit all day in front of a looking glass. Oh, me, I see. It's time when I was young. Saw how things used to be in the old days. It, it, couldn't say it. I couldn't say it. But don't, but don't disappoint us, Abby. She won't. You know you won't, Abby. You'll say yes. Think, fifty dollars. Oh, you're all so sad. If you're all so sad, now there's our old dear Abby talking. No, still got to think. Uh, of course you have, Abby, and I want you to think. And I know you won't reach no wrong decision. Go sit alone in your room for ten minutes. No one answered the bell, but I took the liberty of it. You come from a portrait, you can't have it. Already made up my mind, I couldn't anyway. Now looks like I got to make other arrangements. So if you'll excuse me, Mr. Davis. Was you after this portrait, after what you already got this morning? You said your name was Davenport, now she's called you Davis. Who in blazes are you? I certainly didn't expect you to come here of your own free will, Mr. Talley. Uh, will you ask the ladies to leave us alone together? Have you got secrets? Of the most delicate nature. <laughs> you can leave me to attend to him. You watch out, Pa. If he tries anything, shoot him! <laughs> Just call out, Milton. We'll be listening. Of course you will. But your husband and I will be friends now. <laughs> I don't take much stock in that last remark, Mr. Talent. He was good to stole a pile of money from me this morning. I must ask you to be more careful with your language, Dr. Hagen. And what's your opinion of the trick you played on me? <laughs> a simple business transaction. Carried on the classic tradition of art collecting. Not a day passes, but some collector finds a rare and unappreciated work of art. Did you even know, Crispy? I never heard of him until a month ago. <laughs> you certainly have got your nerve with you. Quite. Uh, but down to business, what have you told Davenport about the pictures being left here? I, I haven't told him nothing. I was still hoping to find the rest. You haven't succeeded? They've been burnt. All but the two you got, and that one there. A masterpiece. I'm glad you like it. You and I could hardly hope to reach that height. You and I? What are you driving at? Corot. The name means nothing to you? Not a thing. Corot was a French painter of landscapes. He died in 1875. The bulk of his paintings have been done since then. Same is true of the late Cezanne. He died in 1906. 
I know of at least a dozen excellencies I've seen it within the last year. I spoke to you this morning of a business partnership between us. Allow me, the hill pasture by the late Christopher Bean. I'm careful, don't touch it, it's not dry yet. <laughs> Where did you get it? I painted it. What are you? A forger. Oh, I see you begin to understand. The letters in the Atlantic tell us of the pictures that Chris left here. The originals are lost, but thanks to my particular gifts, they're lost and you disturb us. I assure you, Doctor, I am offering you a gold mine. We have an absolute corner on Christopher Bean, because not only can you vouch for my forgeries, but you can discredit my competitors. <coughs> Have I made myself absolutely clear? It's too risky. Not at all. It's criminal. Well, perhaps, but no picture collecting suckers. Uh, I, I don't like stuff. the sound of it. I was all right this morning before you came in. I was respected by the world and at peace with myself. And I wasn't tempted by nothing to no man. As I said this morning, Dr. we're all mortal. You have a wife, two lovely daughters. That's so I have. And being tempted for your loved ones ain't so bad as if it was on your own account. How much would I get from the scheme of yours? Uh, I was thinking, um, 20%? Chain enough. I'll be liberal, 25%. Not a cent on the 50. If you persist in letting your greed... My greed? My? You can't work the scheme of yours without my help, because I'm in a position to discredit you. It's done then, Dr. Okay. Uh, I'd better want Hannah and Ada not to talk. You up here too? I was here first, Rosen. <laughs> so was you beating me to it? I might have known it. Uh, you two acquainted with each other? Uh, Mr. Rosen will be the selling end of our firm. Uh, Hannah, shut that door and keep up. Uh, we just organized, Rosen, coming in on the ground floor. I come up here after the real thing I'm going to get. I'm not talking about your kind of business today. <laughs> well, there it is. You can pay the price for it. Ha! <laughs> Inside. That's easily fixed. Oh, uh, one of yours, is it? Thanks. Uh, I should say that. Uh, leave him be, Doctor. He's not one of those suckers. I forge most of the pictures he sells. Oh, I know you're good talent, but I never knew you were this good. Oh, recognize the brush strokes, do you then? <laughs> you can't fool me. If it was real, I'd It is real. I... With him on the premises? Word of honor. Yours? Mine. <laughs> There it is. We'll take uh, 20000 for it. No, <laughs> isn't that good if you uh, would you throw in the frame? <laughs> You'll get twice 20000 in a year from now. Oh, if it was genuine, I might. But, but I assure you, Mr. Rosen, it is genuine. The only trouble is I ain't in a position. You're shouting your word, Dr. Haggard, but... Well, you can tell by the strokes. Well, which is it genuine or not? <laughs> in here, Rosen, you don't know. <laughs> what? Oh, here's Davenport. Why don't you ask him? Well, Dr. Haggard, have you found a missing treasure? This is there. Ah. Allow me. And a man who painted this died miserably. Here is all womanhood, its nobility, its tenderness, and its strength. <laughs> It's beautiful as only, as only. Damn comparisons, it's beautiful. That's all I need to hear, Dr. Hey, I'll give you 7,500 for it. You're not buying it, Rosie. Yes, I am, Mr. Davenport, and I'm glad to have you here to see me do it. And what do you want with this? To show up my gallery. Uh, a one-man show, a one-picture show for a whole month before I try to sell it. I want to bring all of DuVine's customers over to Lexington Avenue. Are you going to force me to respect you at last? Yes, I am, Davenport. If it ruins me. Come on now, doctor, be reasonable and we'll talk business. Uh, I, I'd like to sell it to you, but you see, I ain't in a position. Don't do nothing you'd be ashamed of, Pa. You get out of here. I won't have no child of mine criticizing me. Dr. Haggard, please. I can't talk business with women folks around. 10,000, Dr. Haggard. But to tell you, I ain't in a position to sell it yet. Well, you'd better hurry up and try to find the clock. I, I, I know it does. Where is Abby? Uh, she's out there in the kitchen. Oh, oh, never mind her. I might as well be hanged for a sheep as a lamb. Leave this to me, partner. I'll take uh, care of it. You shut up, too. You ain't got no part of this deal. Ten thousand ain't enough. Don't be foolish. It ain't enough. You got to think of my expenses. I don't care about it. Ten thousand ain't I enough. No, I'll ever be able to sell it. I ain't so anxious to sell it. Pa! Don't forget, none. you risk fifty dollars 
taxes on it. I ain't risked it yet. Well, 12,000 of them, but that's the top. No. How much do you want? I ain't quite ready to sell it yet. If I'm going to sell it, you got to make it worth my while. I'll take 40,000. <laughs> You're crazy. Uh, 35. Even that. Mr. Davenport. Oh, I, I'll write then 30. Well, don't be easy, Milton. And, and I won't go no lower. And you got to be quick about it. 15. No. no. 17 and a half. No. no. You're dealing with a united family. Not with me, Mr. Davenport. <laughs> I just want to say I got to... You go up to your room, young lady. You'll get what's coming to you for mixing the matters you can't grasp. I don't care. I just can't stand to see Abby. Oh. Oh. Like the drink been right on her tongue, fall on her head when she was a baby. Oh, she was a sentimental fool like what she, uh, she just can't bear to part with it. She's had it round with for so long. I, I could part with it, though. God Almighty. Oh. Thirty thousand, Mr. Rosen. Take it or leave. Well, I certainly won't take it. See, you met your match this time. Twenty. Thirty. Cash in three days. Twenty-nine. Twenty-three have them at Don and Bella's tomorrow. Twenty-five on the same terms. Done. Ooh. Let's see the money. Good God, give me time. <laughs> Ma, what is it? A new maid from Boston? Oh, what about her? She wants to go back to Boston. Well, let her go. We're gonna have a now, get that door for the patient you're telling your pa's retired from uh, doctoring. Oh, let me see here. I had this uh, bill of sale all made up for, uh, yeah, it's a thousand dollars. Well, I'll just have to hold it in. What are you doing here, Warren? I found the fat jaddy's truck. Ah, the boy Marvel. Who? Warren? Hello, Mr. Davenport. I've been looking at his pictures, Mrs. Haggard. You produce talented painters in this village. Are his pictures good, too? Warren, we kind of changed our mind about artists since this morning. <laughs> uh, guess I'd better get that truck. Sure. Okay. Now you sign here. And here. And here's the check. Let's see it. Uh, uh, how do I know it gets a balance tomorrow? Oh, God, it's in writing, isn't it? Uh, well, so long as you get that picture on, out of here before. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Hannah, watch that door. <laughs> Please excuse me for interrupting, Dr. Haggett, but I got to be going. And I came to tell you that much as I hate denying you what you have, I knew it was all on. right, Abby. I knew it was all right. Here's the fifty dollars I promised you. God bless you, Abby. What's that man doing there in my portrait? I'm taking it to New York, Abby, to exhibit it, uh, where everybody will come to see it. Could you let me have some string and wrapping paper? Well, right, you got to take it away. Well, I never paid more for a right in my life. It belongs to me. How's that? It belongs to me. A Abby, what's come over you? Did anyone ask you in here like this? What are you after in here anyway? Well, I came to say goodbye and get my portrait, and I seen him fix it and make off. You just it. sold it to me. I never tried. Never. 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 You ought to be ashamed. Abby! You ought to be ashamed, all the sharp, underhanded tricks. This house is mine, and everything in it's mine, and you're my paid help. Good God. My portrait ain't yours! Well, if you'd all step into the entry, Mr. Davenport, and leave me to explain matters quickly to Abby. There won't be no more difficulty. Just five minutes, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Damn it, Dr. Hannah, I just didn't know you get upset, Mr. Rosen. There's been ah. just a little misunderstanding here. We ain't shown much gratitude for all we've done for you, Abby, all these years. Can't help but won't part my portrait. And I was just working up such a nice surprise for you. Well, I caught you at it, and I'd be ashamed. <laughs> you, you think I was trying to do something sneaky? Sneaky and greedy. Always knowed your wife and Ada was greedy. Never knowed you was. Well, Abby, how could you say that about me? When I was only trying to make some money with it. Well, I don't mean that $50. That was just for fun. Going to give you a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars, Abby. You was gonna get it by selling my portrait. People in your circumstances ain't got no right to own things that are worth so much money. Well, that may be. But my portrait's all I got left in this world. Boy who painted it. Well, I ain't ashamed to say it now. It's been so long. But I loved him. And I still love him. 
and he died right after he finished painting it. So it's the last thing he ever painted. Why, it means so much to me. It means all the happiness I ever had. And you know I ain't had so much, Dr. Haggard. I guess I better go catch the train. Abby, you're thinking only of yourself. What about your poor brother and his children? He's a poor man, Abby. Oh, I know it. And he ain't got no work now. I know that, too. And you'll all be poor out there in Chicago. Well, I can't help it, Doctor. And his children, wouldn't you like to give him advantages? But I promised Christine I'd never part with it. Last time I seen him, I promised him that. He painted it for me. Who was being greedy now, Abby? Who would your brother's children say was being greedy? Well, don't keep after me. Let me go, Captain. Uh, there's something else you ain't thought of, Abby. That portrait don't even belong to you. It was time I paid for it. You wasted sitting for Chris Bean to paint it when you ought to have been working. Oh, it ain't. Oh, no. Yes. I worked every minute he was painting. Every minute. I remember I sat out in that barn. Me working and him a paint. And you used to take him out on a coffee to drink, too. I never. Oh, you know how Ms. Haggard always watched the coffee. That was my very own breakfast coffee that I saved for him and took out to him. That's all I had to give him the coffee was. There now, what more meanness can you think of? I'll be honest with you, Abby. Honesty the best policy after all. They want to pay me twenty-five thousand for your portrait. Twenty. You, you take half, Abby. Give me half. If it worked for me, you wouldn't have none of it. No. Then take more than half. Take fifteen thousand. Think what you could do for your brother's children with fifteen thousand. No, no, take twenty, I can't Abby. Go with me. Greed, Abby. Greed. It ain't greed. I wouldn't take a million. You ought to be ashamed. Uh, I am. Uh, well, you let me go now? Yes, God help me, I'll have to let you go. He is so poor, Chris was. Never had no good coat nor nothing warm. Only that one sweater I knitted for him. Never had no warm place to sleep nights nor nothing he needed. He is so poor. He can afford it to go away from here down south. He needn't have died. Just to pray we get an early thought, just for Chris's sake. How is it a man dies so poor when he paints pictures worth so much? Because nobody had any use for his pictures while he was living. Why, well, I liked them. That's why I kept so many of them. Yep. You, 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 you kept so many? Yeah, I kept them. But how did you get them? Well, Miss Haggett, she put them on the bonfire, but I took them off. Well, where are they now? <laughs> In my trunk, these rolled up, these are I. Right. Uh, how many are there? They're 17. 17, Abby? Did you say 17? Yeah. Hannah, Ada, Mr. Rosen, come in here. What is it? <laughs> it's really oh, never mind the portrait. The other pictures have been found. No! The ones you burnt, Hannah, oh, you'll never burn them. Oh, Abby's got them in her trunk, and there's 17 of them. Oh, 17 new Christopher Beans. Christopher Beans! Put that truck down and open it. I just broke it up. I'm roping, got a knife, ain't you? He's pure, baby. This is my train, Dr. Oh, oh. You're talking about trains in his head like this? Oh, 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 oh. There. Where are they, Abby? You better let me, Dr. Haggett. I'm like the folks from the map in my truck. Where are now I'll talk business with you, Mr. Rosen. Hey, excuse me, Dr. Haggett, but I am the picture dealer here. Did you roll up my truck again, Norm, please? <laughs> well, Dr. Haggett, I wasn't prepared for any such deal as this. Now, be careful, don't harm them. What would you say it's worth, Mr. Davenport? Well, now I don't know. But you promised you'd tell me. Is it worth 10000 Easily, I should say. Hannah, Easily. do you hear that? Easily 10000 for the first one on the pile, and there's 17 of them. Oh, oh. 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 What's that? I've got to get to my stomach. hill pasture. Jamie, oh, tell them to a Dr. Haggard. Certainly, it's the hill pasture. I saved them. To save them from burning. Thought they'd mind to keep. Say now, before we start talking business, I got to know if you really are the rightful owner this time. Who would be a BH? Uh, I got your word for it, they're mine, and was it they left here against an unpaid bill? Yes, Rose, and I do expect they belong to him. Well, you see. Well, let's look for the rest. <clears throat> well, I never tell anything this big before, Dr. Haggard. A corner in Christopher Bean. Bye, Dr. That's Haggard. what it is, Mr. Rose. I got to be going. 
Uh, my train will be leaving, Dr. Haggett. That's why I... I wouldn't be in a hurry to sell, Dr. Haggett. Not a lot, anyway. I wasn't figuring on that, Mr. Davenport. Bye, Ada. Bye, Ms. Haggett. Why, you must have a couple hundred thousand in this pile. Oh, Mom! I don't know, though. I might get the deal financed. Uh, would you give me time? Uh, don't know about giving time. Goodbye. Uh, I got to be going now. now. Listen, there's Goldstein. Uh, I'll just go. This way, nothing else to do. People, um, okay. Take out my trunk warm, please. Well. Um, so I'll tell you what, Dr. Haggett, why don't you keep going, that check for a 30-day yeah, deposit? Well, so long as you set a price on the whole lot, I'll put a good go. price. Yeah, right. well, let me figure out. Oh, you go ahead, ahead, Mr. Rose, and we're not going to stop you. I'll figure about your portrait before you leave. Oh, I'm not trying to take it from you. Or not. Or not. But Abby, a work of art like that is a responsibility. It's yours, but only yours for trust, the future. Take it to Chicago by all means, but when you get there, don't keep it where it won't be safe. Lend it to, sh to the Chicago Art Institute. You can go see it every day, you know. Would you do that? No. I'd think about it. 180,000. You said 200. I appeal to Mr. Davenport. Please. Abby, I know how much this portrait means to you. I know the bond that must have existed between you and Christine when he painted it. <laughs> Carrying's on, if you call that a bond. <laughs> Mr. Davenport, he's the only man ever asked me to marry him. You, 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 you didn't marry him, though, did you, Abby? Well, he is so sick, couldn't refuse him nothing. <laughs> then you're his widow? Oh, yeah, no, I am. She's got to prove it. She's, she's got, can, she's got to prove it. She's, she's got to prove it. Abby, this is wonderful. <laughs> but you never told. Why didn't you? <laughs> this is certainly turning out just like Christopher <laughs> Bing would have wanted. And I can't stand these pictures belong to her. My God, I can't do business with these people. Don't get it. Yeah, she doesn't get it. Never mind that body. She doesn't get it. I can't prove it. Got my marriage lines out in my in the wedding ring. Here on the TV. Wanted to keep folks' good opinion in my place here, Dr. Haggard, but don't care who knows it. Now, I'm Mrs. Christopher B. Just much as Miss Haggard's Miss Haggard. 